My name is Melissa and this is my presentation for the Capstone Project for the Accounting Program at Post University. Um, I created my presentation using the program Prezi and initially creating it I was frustrated because I couldn't overlay sound on it so I took that um, opportunity to use it to my advantage and uh, try and do a presentation for you um, as if I were in front of you really. Um, this presentation is on the study that I completed for my uh, research paper number three on the possibility of a universal currency. Um, I love to travel, exchanging money, you know, happens all the time as uh, so going out of country, uh, and it was a study that I was really excited to complete. So jumping right into it is with the history of currency. Currency is defined as a legal tender which is exchanged for products, goods, or services. And China was actually the first country to use a banknote. Um, what I found super interesting about currency is that it's not necessarily gold and silver. It could be rice, corn, um, anything that can be used for bartering services or um, in exchange for goods. Uh, currently, there are 180 currencies that the United Nations recognize and there are 195 countries in the world that uses these currencies. The two most popular are the dollar and the euro, which we'll go over to now. Um, the dollar is the most common term for currency. There's the Australian dollar, um, the US dollar, just to name two. So if there's so many dollars in the world, why are there so many currencies? There are 22 countries that use their own form of the dollar as their national currency. Um, which makes it not exchangeable country to country. Um, the Australian dollar is not held to the same way as the US dollar on the stock exchange. Uh, the US dollar is the most commonly recognized and accepted dollar um, in the world of all the countries who choose, and there are countries who choose to use the US dollar instead of their own national dollar. Um, places like Panama use the US dollar, but they are not part of the United States. Um, and places like Canada and Mexico also accept the U.S. dollar, in addition to their own currencies. The second most popular currency is the euro. Um, it was officially adopted in 1995, and it's used in countries mainly within the European continent. Um, 19 countries is where the euro is the legal tender, and there have been a large number of benefits from adopting the same currency within this region, which we'll get into a little bit later as well. Uh, to start off, we're going to talk about some strengths of using a universal currency, and then we'll get into some weaknesses. So for some strengths, um, if we do go to a universal currency, wouldn't it just be easier if the world functioned on this one currency instead of the 180 that we currently have? Um, a universal currency has the potential to end a developing country's financial crisis. The example we're going to talk about today um, is about what happened in Zimbabwe, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, it has the ability to increase markets among nations where all of the nations would be on a level playing field instead of strong nations versus weaker nations. Um, and there would be no cost for currency exchange um, or a, a risk for inflation. And this would really um, save a lot of money for those that exchange currencies very often. So the first topic, ending a financial crisis. Uh, Zimbabwe experienced extreme hyperinflation in 2008 um, and this was devastating, truly. Um, they peaked at 79.6 billion percent in November of 2008, um, and their community had stopped and, and refused using the Zimbabwean dollar. Um, other countries, this is where it is a benefit to have multiple currencies, but um, keeping that thought in mind, other currencies were used in an effort to uh, stop inflation and to help Zimbabwe get out of their, their debt. Um, because the Zimbabwe dollar was virtually worthless at this time. With a universal currency in effect, Zimbabwe would be introduced to a stable currency um, and they would not have to risk enduring future inflation, um, just the same for other weaker countries as well. Having a universal currency could have the potential to increase economic growth. Um, it, would offer a more stable economic development at a um, more 
more steady pace. Um, Robert Mundell was actually a name I came across very often during my research. He's a Columbia University economist, and he states that it would be um, a common inflation rate with a universal currency, similar interest rates, and an increase in trade, which would uh, lead to the growth of the economic world and overall well-being. Um, buying and selling markets can become level from an increase in trade and business that would now be worldwide instead of just nation to nation. Um, the trade would give everybody the same opportunity. There would not be strong players or weak players. Everybody would be considered the same. Um, I thought that this topic was really interesting. Uh, exchange rates on the thought of a universal currency. Um, an exchange rate is a ratio at which two country, two different currencies are traded and it's comprised of a base currency and a counter currency. So if we are traveling um, overseas to China, then you know we would are because we're going to China, the US dollar would be the base currency and the counter currency would be the uh, Chinese yen. With a single currency, an estimated $400 billion a year in foreign exchange transactions would be eliminated. That would save, over time, an undescribable amount of money. Um, and exchange rates are always changing. So, for example, if we need euros and we trade 100 US dollars, we might get, at one point, you know, 70 euros. If we wait two months, Political things can change, um, the need for euros might change, so we might get, spend 100 US dollars and we might get 90 euros. So the, the difference in time really would be eliminated if we were all on the same currency. Um, exchange rates are constantly changing, as I just mentioned, um, and the rate is influenced by the, the uh, country's and currency's popularity and demand, so that can always change. Going into the weaknesses of a universal currency, um, I was actually really surprised doing my research. I found more uh, information to source for strengths, but my personal opinion was, before starting this, that we would not be able to do a universal currency due to the weaknesses, but I had trouble finding a lot of information as to why. Um, but I did find three important topics that would prevent us from using a universal currency. Um, replacing a nation's own unique currency within a universal currency causes a new set of issues. Countries would face the loss of their own independent monetary value, um, and they would lose their purchasing power and being able to use the exchange rate to their advantage. Universal currency's effects would be occurring worldwide instead of nation to nation, um, which we'll get into in a little bit. But the first topic I, I researched was the loss of independent monetary policy. Um, this, currently, the International Monetary Fund grants the U.S. dollar, the euro, the yen, the pound, and the renminbi as the five reserved currencies in the world right now. The U.S. dollar has a dominant role in the global economy, and there are nations such as China who hold um, two trillion dollars in, in U.S. dollars, and they are concerned if we do use a universal currency, not the U.S. dollar, um, those two trillion dollars would be virtually worthless, um, and that would be a huge loss for their economy. Uh, each country would be subjected to the U.S. fiscal and monetary policies if we do go to a U.S. dollar worldwide. Um, it would give other countries no say in their own fortune or their own future. Um, you know, so China, Australia, and England would all be on the U.S. standards, even though they have their own um, daily events going on, their own functions, their own issues, you know, they would still be subjected to the same policy as us. Purchasing power, um, being on a universal currency, it can eliminate a country's ability to use the exchange rate to their advantage. Um, because it's always changing, there are consumers that, that use it to their advantage. They, they buy when exchange rates are low and, and sell when they're high so that they can make some money. Um, consumers are always trying to purchase goods at the right time, and, and this is really maximizing the purchasing power. If we are all on a universal currency, we would lose that. Um, different countries and currencies would keep goods cheaper when exporting to strong currency regions. So we would lose that, that 
um, ability and advantage to sell to, to stronger countries. The effects worldwide is something that I found probably most interesting of the down effects of a universal currency. Um, the possibilities of a universal currency could seem impossible due to the many governmental and political issues that are currently and ever-changing worldwide. Um, there is no single comprehensive government, and without that, it would be extremely difficult to establish an adequate system of checks and balances on a central bank, and we really would need that in order to be on a universal currency. Um, another worldwide concern would be placed into the different time zones. So if um, Australia implements a new monetary policy, when would that take a place and when would that take effect in the East Coast versus the West Coast of the U.S.? If it were to take, um, take place at midnight in each respective time zone, you know, come the next day, we would know if it worked or not in Australia versus should we even start it on the East Coast? And, and that's really a disadvantage because every country is not on the same time and place every day. Um, so that's really a downfall to universal currency. So because there are two equal stances, um, I was not able to find a study on how many in the accounting field feel one way or the other. A lot of the research I found kind of gave strengths and disadvantages to both. Um, so I think it's pretty equally divided um, whether they think it could work or not, which leads me to the next topic, what would be the new possibility. This is where I stand on it. Um, it's a little bit of a mixture of both topics. Um, there are noted strengths of having a universal currency that could be beneficial to the world, and then there are certain weaknesses that should be avoided at all costs. Um, as a substitute for a 100% universal currency, um, an integration of regions creating a new currency poses a very impeccable future. Um, an example of the scenario would be the euro within the European Union and the US dollar which we'll talk about now. Um, the EU, um, discussed a little bit earlier in the first slide, was launched in January uh, at the late 90s, and the euro is the second most used currency in the world, behind the US dollar, and the official currency of 19 European unions. This area is known as the Eurozone, um, and it is used by 341 million people currently. Denmark and the United Kingdom have chosen not to participate as two of the countries within this region. Um, and there are also seven other European countries who have still not um, adopted the euro due to not meeting uh, regulations and standards that are necessary. Um, the successful use of the euro has made travel easier, it's increased trade growth, and improved financial stability all within the European area. Um, this area, all the countries are very close together, they're all drivable for the most part. Um, Europeans travel a lot, you know, they take holidays, um, and they just travel to different countries because the, the flights and the travel time is so short. Using one currency has really uh, increased tourism. Um, there's no need for exchange rates within this, this region. So uh, a, a model like this would be one that we could possibly follow. The second example is uh, currently North America. So it's comprised of Canada, um, the U.S., Mexico, and Central America, um, as we're all conjoined within the land. Um, one of the use of the American dollar is a widely chosen currency, even though it's unofficial in some places, like I discussed, like Panama, um, Mexico, they accept it with a lot of tourist spots already. Um, these, this land is travelable by vehicle, similar to the way that the countries are in Europe, so a strategy similar to the Euro could be a possibility. Uh, tourism would have the ability to increase, trade would have the opportunity to grow, and financial stability would be able to materialize. However, safety concerns within some underdeveloped countries can kind of put a halt to that. Um, at the moment, um, safety and um, low tourism at the moment, just due to political issues that are ever-changing, um, puts some smaller undeveloped countries not on the map. Um, so that is something to consider too. Also, within a universal currency, I thought it was important to discuss cryptocurrency. Um, it's a very new topic, but there are many, many types of cryptocurrencies, so I thought it was important to hit on. 
Cryptocurrency is a technological currency used for digital transactions. Um, its designations include Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Prime Coin, just to name a few. And just like banknote currencies, cryptocurrencies fluctuate in value, although more drastically and more, um, they happen more often. While the concept of cryptocurrencies is still fresh and new, there's so much to learn about this and what works and what doesn't. Um, it must become stable and regulated before the discussion of a universal cryptocurrency can happen. And finally, in conclusion, having the world on a single currency could end a developing country's financial crisis and strengthen economic growth by increasing trade. However, on the opposite end, a single currency would mean a nation would lose their purchasing power uh, and monetary policy. Until a single universal government has rules and regulations that governs all nations, a single currency would be nearly impossible to implement. Um, but a possibility of combining the two could be in our future. Thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed my presentation on a possibility of a universal currency.